Hey there! Um, this is the second video of my deep dive series where I uh, look at some of the mods that I'm using in my games and you may find that these are uh, worth a look for use in your own games. Uh, I also want to point out that uh, these videos will be directed from the point of view of PC users using a keyboard and mouse and otherwise running with the default settings. Now uh, if you happen to be running on a Mac or a console or if you use a gamepad on the PC uh, some of the control options and elements will undoubtedly be different, but the uh, overall functionality demonstrated should still be valid. These craft machines, and I can only assume that I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, has been around for a while. It was first released in late June of 2016, and it's been updated off and on ever since. Uh, there are versions for Minecraft 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.18, and 1.19. Uh, the latest version of the mod is version 2.0.0, uh, and that's for Minecraft 1.19.2, and that is the version I'll be talking about today. The mod adds four machines, uh, specifically vehicles, to the game, and there is a small airship, a small water vessel, and two uh, ground vessels, which are more like real-world hovercraft than anything else. Now, I've made extensive use of the airship and the water vessel in my own games, but uh, when it comes to land vehicles, I typically prefer something that has wheels. Uh, however, uh, all of the vehicles are relatively easy to build and operate, and the mod seems to have uh, minimal impact on game performance during play. And uh, all of that is why I've been using the mod uh, since I first found it last winter. The airship can carry a single passenger in addition to the pilot and supports an inventory equal to a single chest. It moves relatively quickly and the main selling point is that it's obviously immune to conditions on the surface. The sea vessel is the fastest of the machines, but its movement is generally limited to the surface of uh, rivers, lakes, and oceans. It seats one passenger in addition to the pilot and it has an onboard inventory equivalent to two chests uh, when properly equipped. Both land vessels act as hovercraft and are designed primarily to move over land, uh, but they're relatively slow and they move even slower when over water. Now, uh, one of them will seat a passenger in addition to the pilot and supports one chest for inventory. Uh, the other is called the hauler and it's even slower and seats only the pilot, but it does carry four chests for storage. Uh, I have not been able to find any updated documentation for the mod online and what I was able to find is a bit out of date. However, uh, I should be able to give a fairly full explanation of the mod with the information I was able to find and what I've been able to discover through experimentation. Uh, before we can start riding around in our cool new rides, uh, we need to craft them. And before we can put anything together, we need a bunch of Zagonite. Now, that name may or may not be familiar to you, uh, if you are familiar with Zagonite, then you've already been playing with the V's Craft Machines mod, or you've spent a lot of hours playing EverQuest 2, where Zagonite is a high-tier material for weapons and armor. However, in the uh, Minecraft V's Craft context, Zagonite is a mineral that makes the V's Craft vehicles possible. Now, you need Zagonite to craft your machines, uh, you need Zagonite to repair your machines, and ultimately, this is where most of your Zagonite will eventually go. Um, you can even use Zagonite to craft a more efficient fuel for your vehicle. So, uh, how do you find and procure Zagonite? Well, easy peasy. Uh, just go digging and mining like you normally do. And anytime you uh, mine copper, iron, or gold, you'll receive a Zagonite shard. Now, based on that, you may think that you'll be swimming in Zagonite shards. However, it takes a lot of Zagonite to craft one of these machines, and it takes a bunch more Zagonite to keep these machines in working order. Now, you may find at some point that you have a lot of Zagonite, but once you start building and running these vehicles, you'll find your Zagonite reserves will always be a bit on the bare side. While Zagonite is central to everything in Beast Craft, uh, you cannot use it directly. You need to smelt it. And even then, you cannot smelt it directly. Uh, using clay, planks, and a whole lot of charcoal or coal, uh, you craft machine part molds, and it's the molds that actually get smelted in the machine parts, which requires yet more coal and charcoal. Now, it takes four Zagonite shards to create each mold, and a smelted mold will yield two machine parts. So, as a rule of thumb, keep in mind that however much Zagonite you have on hand, the amount will be halved when it comes time to do uh, something useful with it. Once you're cranking out machine parts, you're ready to move on to the next step and construct a, uh, a chassis of the vehicle. Now, the chassis is essentially the frame and body of the vehicle. Uh, it's the part where you and your cargo sit. 
Um, all four vehicle designs are constructed in basically the same manner. A chassis is crafted and deployed into the game world. Now once deployed, the chassis will tell you what still needs three more parts to be completed. Now these are the panel construction kit, the metal construction kit, and the cloth construction kit. Uh, these are crafted as normal using a crafting grid, but they are combined with the chassis outside of a crafting grid uh, in the actual game world. Now you combine them with the chassis by crouching next to the vehicle and right clicking on the vehicle with the desired construction kit in your hand. Once you've uh, installed each of the construction kits, the message over the chassis will change and inform you that you'll need to use a wrench on the chassis to complete construction. The wrench mentioned is the one that comes with the Beastcraft mod. Of course, it takes a bit of Zagonite to craft one, but once you have it in your hand, crouch down and right click on the chassis with the wrench in your hand and voila, the chassis is complete. The creation of all four vehicle designs is exactly the same up to this point. Uh, but while the chassis is complete, it's not yet a working vehicle. So this is the moment of truth. Um, you must decide which vehicle design you want to build and then craft the corresponding instruction kit. Now there are four different kits and uh, each one corresponds to one of the four vehicle designs. Now as you may guess, the purple air kit will make the chassis into a small airship. Uh, the blue sea kit will transform the chassis into a small boat. The orange ground kit will create a hovercraft of moderate speed and cargo capacity and the yellow hauler kit will create a slightly slower hovercraft with much greater storage capacity. To apply an instruction kit, you need to open the control panel. Now you can do this by standing beside the chassis and crouching and then right clicking on the chassis. Or you can right click on the chassis without crouching and this will put you in the vehicle. And once you're inside, uh, press the R key by default and open the control panel from there. Um, there are three different interfaces in the control panel and these can be reached independently through clicking on the blue tabs in the upper left corner of the control panel. The top tab is the main control panel which is opened by default. Uh, the middle tab opens the processor control panel and the bottom tab opens the inventory control panel. Now these are not the official names for these interfaces but since I can't find the official names for them, uh, these are the ones I came up with. Before you can do anything in any of the other control panels, you must open the processor control panel and insert an instruction kit into the gray slot at the very center of the panel. Now this will immediately transform the chassis into the vehicle type matching the construction kit you just installed. The vehicle is now finally operational. Now if you select the top tab in the upper left, you will return to the main control panel and I suggest you do so as your vehicle has no onboard storage capacity until you set it up. In the center right portion of the main control panel, there will be one or more empty gray boxes with a shadowy image of a chest in each box. Now these represent the vehicle's onboard inventory, but these gray boxes only represent potential cargo capacity. The vehicle has no actual cargo capacity until a chest is dropped into one of these gray boxes. Each box will support one chest and each chest equipped in this way can be accessed via the bottom tab at the upper left portion of the panel. If you don't need or want to store stuff on board your vehicle, you don't need to bother with equipping the vehicle with chests. On the other hand, if you don't want to make multiple round trips, you should add the storage. And this is even more important when we start talking about fuel and durability. Airships in the regular ground vehicle can each support one chest in this way. Uh, the sea vessel can support two chests and the hauler can support four chests. And uh, incidentally, the hauler has an extra tab in the upper left to allow access to the third and fourth chests. If you put uh, items in the vehicle's inventory and then pull the chests out of the gray box in the control panel, uh, the items in the onboard storage will come out of the vehicle storage and will be placed in your inventory. If there's no room in your inventory, then the items will be dropped and if you happen to be flying dozens of blocks above the landscape, your hard-won goodies will be showered on those below. Great news for them, bad news for you. As a best practice, leave your chests alone once they're installed. Before you can start the vehicle, you'll need to fuel it. In the upper left corner of the main control panel, there's a gray box in which to add fuel. Now, coal or charcoal work well. You can craft four machine pellets with three coal and one zagonite, and these pellets are a more efficient fuel source, but not radically so. Uh, I suggest you save your zagonite for maintenance. Once the craft is fueled up, click on the red power button located in the center left portion of the main control panel. This starts the engine and the vehicle can now be driven. 
When the time comes to exit the vehicle, use the dismount key just as you would with a regular Minecraft horse. By default, this is the left shift key. Uh, the vehicle's movement controls are similar to those for the player when on foot. By default, the W key moves forward, the S key moves backwards, and the A and D keys will rotate steer left and right respectively. Uh, you cannot strafe or sidestep in a V's craft vehicle. On the main control panel, there's a red button to the right of the power button. This is the auto run button. And when the auto run button is turned on, it turns green in color. And if you press the W key to move the vehicle forward, the vehicle will continue to move forward until you power it down or press the S key. You can think of this as a cruise control. There are some other movement keys peculiar to each vehicle. Uh, if you press space while in the ground vehicle with the engine running, you'll make a bunny hop. Holding the space key down will make continuous bunny hops spaced roughly a second apart. If you press space while in the airship while the engine's running, you will rise. If you let up on the space bar, you'll remain at the altitude you're already at. If you want to go down, you need to press the X key. Uh, there's a very important note to make here. Uh, if you do a lot of swimming in Minecraft, you may be used to using the left shift key to move down. And that's great when you're not in the vehicle. However, this is also the dismount key, and so pressing the key will exit the vehicle. And this is particularly hazardous in the airship as it leaves the player standing on the vehicle with their head in the airbag above while at a potentially lethal height from the ground. Now, from this point, the player can look down and re-enter the vehicle, but if they move much in any direction, they will drop from the airship, and depending on the altitude of the airship at the time, there may be a subsequent dirt nap. Uh, this is particularly dangerous to do while moving forward, as you're likely to exit the vehicle and walk off the front of it all at once. And that brings us right back to the dirt nap. As a general best practice, I carry around a stack of scaffolding or gravel when flying around in my airship. Uh, this is because if I should accidentally disembark from my craft while it's in flight, uh, the airship will remain where it is, in midair, and that might be at a considerable height. So getting back into my airship will either require the fuel to run out and the craft to land on its own, or for me to climb back up to it, hence the scaffolding or gravel. And that brings up an important point. If the vehicle's on, it's using fuel, whether you're in it or not. So you should get in the habit of remembering to turn the vehicle off when you exit the craft. When playing in creative mode though, the vehicles do not need additional fuel and essentially have unlimited fuel, so the power will never run out. I normally play solo, but for multiplayer worlds, a vehicle can be owned by a given player, and the vehicle can be locked and require a player-specific ignition key. Now these are easily crafted, and if you're running JEI, and I strongly recommend that you do when using any mod, uh, there is some instructional text in the tooltip for the machine deed and the ignition key as to how to use them. On the main control panel, there's a set of controls in the middle of the panel between the power controls and the inventory control. Now this is the built-in disc player, because a sweet ride is so much sweeter when you have your tunes with you. If you found music discs in the game, you can insert them into the gray box with the ghosted image of a disc, and then use the play and stop buttons below that to play those discs. The Vscraft mod comes with a few discs of its own. Uh, presumably, these can be found in the game world somewhere, but they can also be crafted with a single Zagonite shard and a book. The recipes for each should be available in JEI. Vehicles have durability like other tools. They lose durability through damage by hostile actions and through simple use. And by simple use, I mean just having the engine running is enough to reduce durability. When driving the vehicle, there's a green bar on the center screen in the dashboard that shows the relative health of the vehicle. As durability is reduced, the green bar grows shorter. Now when looking at the main control panel, the durability is shown in the upper right corner of the panel as actual numbers, and this is a more precise way to track it. By default, all non-upgraded vehicles have a durability of 250. This can be increased through the use of upgrades, but I'll go over that a little later. Uh, when the durability drops below 50, the vehicle will start to display smoke particles even when it's turned off. If the engine is running, then you will hear the engine sputter and choke. As the durability drifts closer to zero, the smoke and sound effects become more pronounced. Now if these were cars, this is where the check engine light would come on and start blinking and every audible alarm in the car would be going off. And at that point, you need to do some maintenance or get your vehicle back to the dealership. When the durability of the craft reaches zero, the craft will explode and will no longer operate. 
Now, if you're in any other mode uh, other than creative, you probably don't want to be too close to the vehicle when that happens. And that includes actually being in the vehicle at the time. Smoke particles will drift upward from the wreck and the written word broken will hover over it. Emergency repairs can be made with a wrench by crouching next to the craft and right clicking on the craft with the wrench in hand. Now this restores five durability and once repaired with a wrench, the additional attempts to repair with a wrench will have no effect until the vehicle reaches zero durability or it's repaired with a proper service kit. Service kits are craftable items and depending on the kit used, they can restore 25 or 100 durability. Now there is a service kit that will completely repair a vehicle, but it's not craftable. Uh, presumably, it's for use in the creative mode or possibly could be found as treasure uh, somewhere in the world, but I've never found one. There is a series of craftable upgrades that can be applied to each vehicle. Uh, these upgrades increase the maximum speed, durability, and energy of the vehicle. And the first upgrade in the series increases these values by 25%. And each succeeding upgrade will upgrade them by another 25% so that the final upgrade will provide a 100% boost to all of these stats. Uh, only one upgrade can be installed at a time. And upgrades are installed on the processor control panel in the gray box toward the top of the screen. Just like real life, you need to shut off the vehicle before applying an upgrade. It's also worth noting that the more powerful upgrades require the previous upgrade module in the series as part of the crafting recipe. In addition, each vehicle can have its appearance customized through the use of detailing kits. Now there are four detailing kits, cloth, metal, panel, and frame. Each of these controls the texture of different parts of each vehicle. Now in these examples, the areas in red are detailed by the cloth kit, the areas in yellow are detailed by the metal kit, areas in green are detailed by the frame kit, and areas in blue are detailed by the panel kit. To configure a detail kit, place the kit in the hot bar and select it. Right click while facing the sky or some faraway object, and this will open the texture selection interface. There are tabs in the upper left corner that let you sort through the different selections of textures. When you find the texture you want, click on the white box to the immediate left of the desired texture and this will set the texture for the currently held detail kit. You can overwrite the selection by choosing another option and there is a box in the lower left corner for setting the kit to restore the default texture. Now once the desired texture is set on the kit, then applying the kit is exactly like applying a service kit. Crouch near the vehicle and right click on the vehicle with the detail kit in hand. Finally, these vehicles have a problem that is common to all Minecraft vehicles, including minecarts and rowboats. Uh, sometimes other entities can and almost certainly will wander into them and get stuck. And sometimes this is a good thing and sometimes it's a bad thing. If the hitchhiker is not particularly friendly, uh, you can and probably should kill them to remove them from the vehicle. However, if they are somebody you don't necessarily need or want to kill, there's a solution provided for you. You can craft a dismounter, which can be used to eject entities from the vehicle. If you're playing a multiplayer game and you want to eject another player, uh, there's a slightly different dismounter that can be crafted to do that job. Uh, but there's absolutely nothing from stopping the other player from jumping right back into your ride. V's craft machine supports a number of configuration options. Uh, the base forward movement rate for each vehicle type can be individually adjusted up to double the default rate. And there's also settings relating to fuel efficiency. Now, in my opinion, the one thing missing from the configuration is the ability to adjust or remove the durability loss from use. Otherwise, I think the current mix of configuration options is a solid offering. With all of that said, please allow me to offer a few final thoughts and observations. Now, you may have noticed uh, over the course of this video that the vehicles have an energy rating. Uh, it's represented by a yellow bar in the dashboard. Now, this feature is not fully implemented yet, but it looks like there's going to be uh, some type of functionality around the use of electricity. Now, currently, these craft machines use burning fuels. However, there's a battery and some energy kits that act like durability kits, but recharge energy instead of durability. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like the vehicles are not yet configured to actually use the energy, so I didn't bother covering the energy use here. Uh, well, I guess I just did. Uh, my favorite vehicle is the airship. Besides the fact that it allows you to fly above all the chasms and the hurly-burly of the mobs down below, it's an absolutely fantastic way to run reconnaissance over large segments of land. Now, if you're looking for a specific biome or you just want the general lay of the land, 
then flying during the day is best for that. If you are specifically looking for villages, lava, or inhabited structures, then flying at night is particularly effective as these places tend to produce light, and so they show up much more easily in the dark. Speaking of flying, uh, you would best be ready to do some ad hoc skydiving. <laughs> excuse me, uh, skydiving. My first solution to prevent accidental falling was to move the dismount key up into the function keys. Uh, but then I had a problem with swimming downward because that placement is incredibly awkward in that particular case. I've also tried leaving the dismount key where it is and moving the key defined for moving down in the mod. Uh, but I've been playing Minecraft for so long that when I get all wrapped up in a pretty view or finding something particularly interesting, I may forget about falling and accidentally tap on the dismount key and do another impression of a flying anvil. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that you can kill the engine while in midair, and the airship will gradually drift to the ground. Now as long as you stay in or on the vehicle, you will not suffer damage from the drop. For longer trips in the airship, take a bed with you. When it starts getting dark, find the closest forest and land on top of a tree. Then you can exit the vehicle and place the bed on the leaves of the tree and sleep in complete safety, uh, unless you have phantoms after you or you've installed a mod that has other flying beasties. Another tip for long journeys uh, in any of the vehicles is to take plenty of maintenance kits with you. Now I always have enough maintenance kits to ensure that I can get back to my base with my vehicle intact. But if your machine breaks down, it'll stay where it is. And you can't break it and put it in your inventory, nor can you drag or manipulate it across the landscape and thus back home. And all that's probably by design, so that you can't infinitely use the vehicles without earning the right to use them. Uh, there are also a couple of gray boxes on the main control panel that I don't understand. Uh, one gray box has the ghosted image of an item frame with a sword in it, and the other gray box is completely blank. Now I can place an item frame in the first gray box, and once the item frame is in place, it seemed to be able to place almost anything in the second gray box. Uh, however, that's as far as I've been able to go with that. There's a special function key configured for the mod, and by default it's set as the C key, but that doesn't seem to do anything. Now my guess, based on the ghosted image of the sword in the item frame, is that the vehicle can be armed or equipped with something, or perhaps someday that will be the case. Uh, my thought is that maybe the idea is that a vehicle could be mounted with an axe to go harvesting trees or a sword to go killing mobs or something along those lines. Um, that's my guess, but it's completely unsubstantiated and your guess is as good or better than mine. So the vehicles could have been designed to look like uh, just about anything, but one of the things that first attracted me to this mod is that the vehicles have a kind of retro jerry-rigged look to them. Now lately I've been enjoying game worlds that have a distinct steampunk flavor to them and these vehicles fit that vibe very well. And that's all I have to say about Vscraft machines. Uh, overall, I found it to be a lightweight mod packed with useful stuff and generally configurable to meet my needs and whims. Uh, it's an excellent offering and worth a look for use in your own worlds. And so until next time, I wish you good health, good spirits, and a touch of good fortune. Cheers.